What's up everyone? So in today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to rip your BIOS from an original PlayStation to use legally on an emulator. Let's be honest, a lot of people just download a BIOS from the internet and uh, eh, it's a little shady guys. So today I'm going to show you how to do it legit. You're obviously going to need a PlayStation has been serving me so good since we fixed it up. I'm so glad we did this. Um, PlayStation 1 memory card, you need a blank one. I'm just using this third party guy and it worked wonderfully. It costs like four bucks. Um, a way to play backup PlayStation 1 games. And of course you need a blank CD with which to burn the program on. Now over on the computer side of things, we're gonna need to download a couple of things. The first one being the BIOS dumper program that runs on the actual PlayStation itself. After you get that downloaded, go ahead and get it extracted and you will see a few folders inside. There's a couple of different ones, but we're looking for this CD folder. And as you can see, there is a BinQ file. And if you remember the last video, what do we do? We burn that with image burn. It's just so easy. Just go to the folder, select your Q file, lowest write speed once again, and go ahead and click on that burn button. Ah, oh, what a glorious sound effect that always is. I love hearing it every time. And there we go, our disc is burned. So we need to make sure that this memory card is actually empty before we get started. So open up your, I mean, start up your PlayStation with nothing in it, go to your memory card manager, and just delete anything that might happen to be on here. So sorry, Great Valley Racing Adventures, but you are getting removed. Um, yeah, sure, backup codes, yeah. Get rid of those two. Now that your memory card's empty, go ahead and boot into your burned disk that you just made of the BIOS dumper, and you'll be met with a screen like this. And honestly, it's pretty self-explanatory from this part. Just press X to start dumping each part of your memory card. So we're gonna start with part one, and this is all, this is how long it takes in real time, so just bear with it. I just want you to see how long this takes. And there we go, it's done. So just go ahead and press triangle to get back to the main menu. At this point, you're gonna need a way of copying saves off of a PS1 memory card. Uh, the method I decided to use was a modded PS2 with a USB SD card reader. I've always had great success with the card readers. Um, flash drives have always been kind of hit and miss with me, but I've always found, once again, great success using these guys. So. There are other options available if you happen to have one. There is the DEX drive for the PS1, which was Detel's way of hooking PS1 memory cards up to your computer back when the PlayStation was new. And then there is also other various USB adapters floating around the web. But use whatever option you have available on hand. This tutorial is going to cover how to do it using a PS2. As soon as we get our PS2 booted up, we're going to need to open ulaunchl if I have mine set up so it's named File Browser on my PS2. It might not be on, called File Browser on yours, it just depends how you have it set up. So after you get ulaunchl booted up, you go into the memory card, um, well I hope you've inserted your PS1 memory card, but you go in here, you mark it with X, and you press R1 to bring up a menu. I use the cut option so that way I don't have to format the memory card every time I dump a new part of the BIOS, but after that we go down to our mass storage device, which was my USB SD card reader, and then you tell it to paste the save. And you might get a couple of prompts telling you, uh, do you want to continue copying? Just tell it yes, um, just tell it to do its job, just keep telling it to do yes, um, and the save will copy over to your USB device and after it's done copying we just repeat the steps that we did for part one for the remaining four parts. Once you have that finished we're gonna go back to our BIOS dumper 2.6 folder and open up BIOS merge. So copy all five parts of your BIOS that you dumped 
over into this folder, but it's not quite ready to use yet. As you see, if we try to run it like this, um, it's not set up properly, so there is still one more step we need to get done, and that is to put these BIOS folders, I mean BIOS files, into um, back into PlayStation 1 memory card format. And to do that, we are just going to use a tool called Memcard Rex. You can download it here. And it is basically just a memory card, a PlayStation 1 memory card manager that we can use for emulators and as well as real consoles dumping saves from a PS2 like this. So first thing we got to do is we've got to import one of our dumped saves into this new memory card that we're building. So go to your BIOS merger folder, select part one, and there we go. Now you just need to do save as and name it part one. There you go. And now when you try to run the dumper, it shows that it is now a valid format. So just go ahead and repeat this process with two through five. Once finished, you're able to run BIOS merge, and you will see that all five parts have been found. You can press any key, and there is your wonderful new BIOS full, um, file in bin format to be used on emulators. Depending on what emulator you use, you need to have it named a specific way. So for RetroArch, um, it needs to be labeled like this. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this entire file name over and put it on my file. Once you have your BIOS properly named, just go ahead and drag it into the appropriate folder to make it run on your emulator for RetroArch. It is the system folder, and then we are able to start testing it on, on games. So let's go ahead and try out that copy of Tony Hawk 2 we dumped in our last tutorial, and... Voila, it's good to go. And there you go, you have successfully dumped your BIOS for use on your favorite PlayStation emulator without having to resort to the gray areas of the internet. Thank you all so very much for watching this tutorial, hope you found it very informative. And as always, thank you all so very much for watching my videos. It is phenomenal how much support you guys have all shown this channel. It has been such a wonderful year, and we are growing crazy fast. Thank you all again for that support. Uh, if you haven't hit that sub button, go ahead and do so now. Um, hit that like, dislike button, depending on how much you like this tutorial. And as always, leave a comment below if you have any questions or concerns. I love to read what you guys have to say, so... Thank you all again so very much. We'll see you back next video.